All right, thanks for watching. And today I would like to show that the limb soup of a sum, so the limb soup of Sn plus Tn, is less or equal to the sum of the limb soups. So it's less or equal to the limb soup of Sn plus the limb soup of Tn. It's sometimes called subadditive. So if you take the sum of it, it's less to equal to the sum of the limb soups. And it's just a classical exercise in limb soups. So let me just remind you what the definition is. So the limb soup of Sn is just essentially the soup of Sn, but after a long time. So after some threshold, very large threshold, you consider the soup of this. And you just let capital N go to infinity. So it's essentially the supremum of Sn after capital N. And you let capital N go to infinity. And so in particular, let's, uh, uh, we need to consider those sets. Sn where N is bigger than capital N. But notice the following. So now notice. If... N is bigger than capital N, because that's what we want to consider, then, well, Sn is less than or equal to the soup after capital N. Because, I mean, basically any number is smaller than the bigger one of all those numbers. And also Tn, it's less than or equal to the soup of Tn where n is bigger than capital N, and then just add them up. So then Sn plus Tn is the less than or equal to the soup of Sn, where n is bigger than capital N, plus the soup of Tn, where n is bigger than capital N. But you see, this is a constant. So in some sense, what we're saying, we're saying that for every n, Sn plus Tn is less than or equal to the constant. So all you need to do, just take the soup of this for, for all n bigger than capital N. And then you're essentially done. So if you want, since this is true for all n, n bigger than capital N, you can just take the soup and you essentially get that the supremum of Sn plus Tn, where n is bigger than capital N, is less than or equal to this soup, the sum of the soups. So soup of Sn, where n is bigger than capital N, plus the soup of Tn, where n is bigger than capital N. And lastly, you just take the limit of capital N as a capital N goes to infinity. But then we're essentially done because then what we have, the limb soup of Sn plus Tn, again by definition it's the limit as capital N goes to infinity of the supremum of Sn plus Tn, where N is bigger than capital N. But by the identity we've just shown, that's less than or equal to the limit as capital N goes to infinity of the supremum of Sn, where n is bigger than capital N, plus the suprema of Tn, where n is bigger than capital N. But then just take, split out the limits, limit capital N goes to infinity, of the supremum of Sn, where n is bigger than capital N, plus the limit as capital N goes to infinity, of the supremum of Tn, where n is bigger than capital N. But then, by definition, that's just the limb soup of Sn plus the limb soup of Tn. And therefore, uh, we're done, but let me also give you a counterexample to show that we don't always get equality. So consider the following. So for instance, let Sn, 
to be minus 1 to the n, and Tn to be minus Sn, which really becomes minus 1 to the n plus 1. So the way Sn looks like, it goes from minus 1 to 1, minus 1 to 1, minus 1 to 1, minus 1 to 1. So that's Sn, and Tn is the opposite. It's 1 minus 1, 1 minus 1, 1 minus 1, 1 minus 1. Then what do we have? Well, the limb sub of Sn, so the biggest possible limit of Sn is 1. The limb sub of Tn, so the biggest possible limit of Tn is also 1. So limb sub of Sn is 1, and limb sub of Tn is 1, but if you add them together, with the limb sub of Sn plus Tn, well, at each point, if you add them together, you get 0. So that's the limb sub of Sn minus Tn, uh, Sn plus Sn minus Sn, but that's just the limb sub of 0 which is 0, and that's different from uh, 2, or 1 plus 1, which is the limb soup of Sn plus the limb soup of Tn. So in practice, we just have a less than or equal sign, and not a completely equal sign. All right, thank you very much.